Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know by now that I've been doing a series of videos on Topaz Labs, Photo AI, Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Gigapixel AI. In the videos, I'm talking about how to best use them as standalone apps and as plugins in Lightroom and Photoshop. There are a number of videos in this series. I only have one left, today's video. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to use Gigapixel AI as a standalone application. In the description below this video will be a link to a playlist. In that playlist will be all of the videos, so you could watch them there. Now, how do you use Gigapixel AI as a standalone app? Well, as you can see, I have Gigapixel AI open. I'm going to click on Browse Images. And on my desktop, I happen to have two different TIFF files. Well, you may be asking, why are they TIFF files? Well, probably you're most often going to need to use Gigapixel AI as a standalone app because the regular editing app you use doesn't have the ability to use Gigapixel as a plugin. So you're going to have to edit your image in that other app, then export it from that other app, and then edit it in Gigapixel. I recommend that you export as TIFF files. TIFF files are still very high quality files. They're like a step below a raw file and all your edits will be there. And if you crop in that other application, your crop will be recognized by Gigapixel. If you export, say, as a DNG, the DNG file, uh, Gigapixel will not be able to read the edits nor the crop. So you probably want to have Gigapixel see the edited image, you know, and include that crop as well, because that's why you're using Gigapixel, right? So export from your editing app as a TIFF file, then bring that TIFF file into Gigapixel. Now I have two on my desktop and actually I didn't crop these because I'm going to show you how to crop in Gigapixel as well. So you have the option, you could crop in your editing app, and then just send it into Gigapixel to increase the resolution. Or you could send the full resolution app into Gigapixel, crop in Gigapixel, and then be done with it. Now I'm going to open this first one here, Tree Swallows. It's a couple of tree swallows uh, on a feeder. So we're just, or on a house, a birdhouse, I'm sorry. So we're going to just click open. And you can see that right away I'm in comparison view. Comparison view, if you watch my other videos, is the view I normally like to start out in because it shows four of the six different AI models at one time. And I could compare them to one another and determine which one looks best. But I mentioned I did not crop in the other app. I need to crop. I recommend you crop right away. So what you need to do is just go to this crop tool right here. And when you do that, you'll be taken out of comparison view and you'll be in your crop view. Now, I don't know, how should I crop this? Let's go to the aspect ratio. By default, it will be free. That means you could just drag in from any corner and make it any way you want. But I don't want that. I think what we'll do is a four to three aspect ratio, but I do not want it horizontal, so I want it vertical. To do that, just click on the two arrows right here. So we made it vertical, move it in here, make it way down. So we're gonna crop away a lot of those pixels. Maybe even up here like this. Yeah, maybe too much dead space at the top. I don't know. Let's see. Let's click on crop down here. We'll accept our crop. And there is our image. When we return from crop, we're in now the single view. And you could see right here. And on the lower left-hand side, you could see how it's updating. You always have to wait for it to update. But I mentioned I like to be in comparison view so I could compare four of the six different AA models to one another. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go to the magnifier right here. We're going to zoom in to, let's say, 100%. And then we'll go to comparison view. And I'll go to my navigator, which is in the top right-hand corner here. And I'll move it over the birds because they're the most important part of the image. And then we'll wait for it to update. On the top left-hand corner, I have the standard model. And what I do is, and if you watch my other videos, I set it ad nauseum. I like to have all of the settings on auto to begin with. So I'm comparing apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So the top left-hand corner is standard. The settings are set to auto. That's this switch right here. 
Next to that, I have low resolution. The settings are auto. In the lower left-hand corner, I have very compressed. The settings are auto. In the lower right are lines. The settings are auto. Now, what you have in your comparison view may vary because these aren't default settings in any way. They'll just be whatever last settings I used or last AI models I've had in comparison view will show up here. So I have standard, low resolution, very compressed, and lines. And um, they all look pretty good, tell you the truth. Uh, but let's just say for the sake of argument that lines is the worst of the four. That's what I'll do. I'll determine which of the four on screen is the worst. Click on it to make it active. You know it's active when it has this rectangle in the lower left-hand corner. And then I'll swap it out with one of the ones that aren't being shown, like HQ. So just make sure that's active. Click on HQ. It will swap that active one out with HQ. You wait for it to render. And there's that. Now let's say that's still the worst one because we have one more um, one more AI model to look at. That's art and CG. Probably not applicable. Now, um, you know, not applicable to this type of image. But let's swap it out anyway. Click on that. And that's that. All right. Now looking at them, um, it appears that low resolution, they all look pretty good, to tell you the truth. Um, it appears that low resolution might be the best. I don't think I really need to move any of the sliders. What I do need to do is take face recovery off. And then uh, what you can do, and I recommend you do it all the time, um, is turn gamma correction on. Gamma correction just gives you a little bit more of a wider gamut. It will make sure your blacks are absolute black, your whites are absolute white, and all the colors that you could see. So if you have a really colorful image, you probably definitely want to have gamma correction on. Uh, in this case, it's not overly colorful, but I'm going to just turn it on because it doesn't adversely affect the image, in my opinion. So I'm going to have gamma correction on. Of course, there isn't a person in this image, so I don't need to have face recovery on. So, this is the one I'm going with, this low resolution. Typically, then what I'll do is I'll go to single view, get a look at it here, let it render. It still looks pretty good. Then I could come in and tweak the adjustments. I don't think I need to. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, now here is a key point. When you're ready to save the image, it can be destructive. Meaning, if I go down here and click on save image, it's going to overwrite the original TIFF file. And there's nothing you could do if you click on save image to stop it from overwriting that original TIFF file. So if you want to preserve the original TIFF file and save this as a new file, what you need to do is go up to File, Save As. And when you do that, you'll have the option then to save it as a different type of file. Let's say this time I'm going to save it as a JPEG, right? So we're going to save it as a JPEG with the Profoto RGB workspace. And I'm going to save it to the desktop and I'll click Save. So we'll just do that very quickly. You can see the progress bar at the top. Let it do its thing. All right. Now, we'll just get rid of Gigapixel for a moment. Here is our JPEG we just created in Gigapixel, as you can see. Now, here's the original TIFF file. You can see there's our original TIFF file. So we did not overwrite that. Let's do just do another one very quickly. I'm just going to drag this right on top of Gigapixel. You could do that with a Mac. I don't think you could do that with a PC. Just drag the image on top of the little icon. Uh, it, with with a um, PC, you have to open it up and go to Open File that way. All right, let's do what we did last time. We're going to go immediately to the Crop Tool. And this time again, I think I'm going to go to a 4 to 3. Again, I want it vertical. So we'll go like this. And you can see that we have a red-bellied woodpecker up here in the tree. like that. So we're cropping away a lot of the pixels. Now, the reason why I'm doing another one is because there was a couple things I kind of left out of that conversation when we did the first one. So let's say, see what that looks like. Okay. So here we are. Now, again, I think I want to look at four of the six AI models at one time. So I'll go to comparison view, 
I'm going to have to zoom in. So we'll go here and we'll zoom into 100%. I'll reposition the navigator over the woodpecker's head. And then we wait for everything to render. Now, what I didn't talk about before was the reason why we're using Gigapixel. It's because we're incre increasing the resolution. I didn't talk about that at all for the previous image. And if you haven't seen my previous videos, you may be wondering, what did I just do? Why did I bother doing that to basically just crop the image? Well, what we're using Gigapixel for is we're increasing the resolution. You have a lot of different ways to do that. The most common way for me is to use scale. So right now, the original cropped image is 1920 by 2561. If I increase it by 2x, it brings it up to 3841 by 5121. If I bring it up to 4x, you can see it jumps it up to 7682 by 10,242. That's pretty big. Let's just go to 2x. You also have the option to just put in a new width for the output size. If you prefer to do it that way, it will automatically adjust the height to match the aspect ratio of the image. Or you could put in the height of the image and it will automatically adjust the width. Let's stay with scale. Let's stay with 2x. That's what we said. And like before, I'm comparing them to one another. And uh, some of them look kind of funky, like very compressed. Looks like it's over sharpened. Uh, Art and CG kind of looks funky up here around the eye. A low resolution looks okay. And standard looks okay, but it's not updated. Sometimes you'll get this where it's not updated. You can clip up it, on it and off it, and then it will update. See, so it's updated. So let's go with standard and we'll go to the single view and we'll reposition our navigator window and let it update. So it takes a little longer to update when you have more pixels displaying. Right now there's a lot of pixels showing, so it's taking a little longer to update. And that looks pretty good. Let's just uh, maybe remove blur a little more. So I took it off auto when I did that. See how that looks? Still have to wait for it to update. Okay, that looks too like overly sharpened so i'll bring it down a little bit again we'll wait for it to update and yeah that looks pretty good so let's just go with that now i want to show you what will happen if you just go over here and click apply we'll do that see that it's saving it it didn't give us the option to change the file name or to save it as a different file type so what it does, it just overwrites the original image. So that's why you really need to be cognizant of that uh, because it can be destructive. And most often when we're doing editing in post, we don't want to be destructive. Now you can see that we just have that still original TIFF file. And if I double click, you can see it's the cropped version. So it overwrote the old TIFF file. And this is what we have now is this one. So there's our two results right there. There's the tree swallows and there is the uh, red belly woodpecker. That's it. That's how you use Gigapixel as a standalone application. And I'm done with the series. So there's a number of videos in this series, maybe around 13 videos in the series. And again, they're all uh, in a playlist and that playlist will be listed in the description below this video. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.